You're listening to the Super League Pod, coming up on episode 138 of your favourite Rugby League podcast. It's the Easter special, so that means we've got two rounds of Rugby League action to look back on for you, as well as your feedback and shout-outs, news from around the world of Rugby League, and our predictions for the upcoming round 11 of Super League play. Strap yourselves in, kids. It's time for your podcast, the Super League Pod. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Super League Pod. We're a day later than we usually are, so that we can squeeze in all that eastery goodness. Uh, Tom and Mark in the podcast studios here at Super League Pod Towers, ready to cast our loving eyes back over the uh, the weekend's double header action. Mark, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Tom. I've had a, had a nice week. How about yourself? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm trying to figure out why you've come dressed as a supply teacher. To be honest, I think I'll. A lot smarter than a supply teacher. I've been out for a meal for my uh, father-in-law's birthday just before. You look very nice. We went to Gusto, which I think is a chain restaurant. In all right, but we went to the Living Branch, and it was it was fine. You Everyone bur- enjoyed the meal. You enjoyed your burger. Yeah, yeah. Good man. Good and man. Um, the old man got a free meal because it was his birthday. Some club you join online. Oh, and I see. Then, then you get free meal. Uh, which he, like he had to talk story. to all the waitresses about several times to get to, to clarify sure. the position. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is he definitely free? I'm definitely not paying yet. It's his birthday, he wouldn't have to pay anyway, surely. No, it, oh no, yeah. Um, I don't think Emma was getting her hands in her, in her pockets, but. Well, her pockets are your pockets, Mark, these days. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all good. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not entirely certain that he listens to the Super League pod, but happy birthday, John. No, he, he knew that we did some sort of thing. He thought it was just. <laughs> <laughs> he, he thought he thought it was just Wigan related, which right. some listeners might say it is. Well, yeah, <laughs> I think some presenters might say it is sometimes. Uh, so, yeah. And with, uh, but yeah, other than that, my week has been good. Mm. I, I mean, we'll get onto the games, but after Good Friday, me and Cass went for a couple of beers and were joined by our friend from the Emerald Isle, uh, Aidan Stalker. Yeah, some of you beers. lasted longer than others, from what I hear. At, at, at about seven o'clock, I. Um, Cass described it as me going from like coherent to hammered right. in like a hundred seconds. Excellent, <laughs> so, excellent. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I reached my maximum. I, I, I stumbled. I thought if I if I stay any later, mm. one, I might not get on a train. Two, if I get on a train, I might end up in Glasgow or Edinburgh on that train. Yeah. Or three, I'll be sick on the train. Or all of the above. Um, well, none of the above happened. <laughs> no, I managed to get home, uh, stumble my way in, disgrace myself in front of my wife, who put me to bed at about nine o'clock, looked after me very well. Oh. She did. Um, and then, yeah. Did she hold your hairline back as you were yawning over the bathroom, over the <laughs> toilet? Or, or, or? There's absolutely no need. There's, the there's none whatsoever in no, there. No, no. <laughs> Like a skinny Chris Hill he is. Um, excellent. Well, I've had a lovely week, Easter weekend and far more wholesome than yours. By the uh, by, by the sounds of it, I was uh, I was out for tea on Saturday night in Lytham for back to eat at Ego. So you so you snapped, yeah. Yes, um, I can't say I was overly impressed at paying um, twelve pound for a halloumi kebab where there was only one skewer. Uh, so I wouldn't be re- that won't be an SLP recommended. But the, the flavour was very nice. No, the food. Ego a very good value if you go for their lunch rapido menu. But yeah. anything other than that, not so great. No. Absolutely. And then other than that, it's been Easter egg hunts galore with Erin, who's had a fabulous Easter and has been doing all those wholesome. Easter to craft things and hunting for eggs and making bonnets and sticking things on paper and lovely stuff like that. So How many eggs has she managed to um, lose since uh, since she found them, Tom? <laughs> well, Mark, it's funny you should say that. Um, there has been there has been a slight, we'll call it a misunderstanding while she was in bed last night. Uh, so 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 far only one, but she goes. She's going to her mum's for five days after tonight, so God only knows what will happen to the, to the remaining eggs. But, um, to be fair, I, I tend to ask, not just because I know I'll eat them. But Darling, we can't take them on the plate <laughs> to Disney. <laughs> Daddy's had to eat them, yeah, exactly. Um, I tend to ask for stuff that aren't eggs, before I just so that we don't get tons and tons of chocolate that I then have to eat. Have to eat, probably the wrong turn of phrase. Um, there isn't a parent out there that hasn't yeah. at one point. An addiction or rather than a requirement. There isn't a parent out there, I'm telling you now, that hasn't at one time or another accidentally snaffled an Easter egg, by the way. Um, but no, it's been, it's been a lovely weekend, and she's back at school today, and she was all up in the summer uniform, all the little check dresses, and that's she's very proud of herself. Ah, right, and there you go. Summer uniform. I did point out to her that it was about 10 degrees outside, and she might be a bit cold. Did she want to wear her? 
uh, winter one. And I was told no, in no uncertain terms. So, fair play. She's only five and fashion is already winning over functionality for, yeah. for that little girl. There you go. So, that's, that's us taking care of. Who's been getting in touch after last week's episode, Mark? Uh, tons of people, as always. We're going to... We've... we've s- Trimmed it back a little bit for the feedback and the news, given yeah. that there's a, a double round of Super League games to go through. Mm-hmm. But we're going to start with Fat Boy Rob, who said, Have I woken up in a parallel universe? Hashtag Tom Ram. Yeah, well, I'm going to add to that, Tom Ram, because you caught me on the back foot last week when we were talking about Chris Joy. He did play the ball. He got up and played the ball. I had a look at the YouTube. Untouched? Yeah, untouched, got up and played oh, the ball. Oh, did he? Yes. Um, so I thought he just dived at a player's feet. No, he dived, he, dived at the, he dived at the feet of, I think it was Deeks and someone else. and um, No one touched him? No one touched him, and he got up and played the ball. Should right. have been a penalty. Then it would be, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there we go. That's not much of a round, but I, I did fact check myself, because uh, you, you got me doubting myself <laughs> with, your com- with your confidence, if nothing else. But so. I don't remember it that well. It wasn't that relevant to me, but I like to wind you well, up like you like to me. wind me but up. Do you know what? The other thing I then saw was, was Mick Withers not knocking the ball forward, and I mean, the try scored off in another grand... In, I think it was the same grand final. So Oh, the absolutely ridiculous try that was given. Yeah. He just, no, it wasn't given. It was given as a no try. There was a pass between two Saints players, and Mick Withers goes to an accept it and the ball passes by his feet uh, he doesn't touch it no I'm thinking of the try that was given in the grand final against, against Leeds oh, right. that was I don't fuck about that I think there was a knock on but yeah, anyway that, who cares that's fine uh, yeah so he got me on that so Mick Withers as well I was feeling annoyed for him anyway goose for that Chris Mc, Mc, Quen. Chris McCarron got in touch and said I think um, I resolved on the way home the other day when I was listening to this to call him Chris McChristmas I don't know why Weird, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's not sticking. No. Um, he's, but he did say to you, Tom, mm. the start of the last few weeks' episodes makes me want to be asked on a date by Tom. Well, that's a sentiment that was echoed. eyes emoticon. Yeah, I, it was a sentiment echoed by uh, by Don Hodgson as well. And I, I said at the time I'd be lucky to have you with you, gents. Well, we've been on a couple of sort of dates with, with Chris, haven't we? We have. Yeah, he's not seen him, enjoyed he's, his company yet. Rob has been a bit and breathy and pissed, which, to be honest, Chris, is how I end most of my dates. So, <laughs> you know, you've cut out the meal, but essentially seen where we end up. Who's next? <laughs> Phil Naden at V8BM, if you want to follow Phil on Twitter. He's normally a Facebook chat, but he's uh, getting multi platform involved. I to worry about Phil, by the way. <laughs> Listening to the podcast, sat in the truck at Pallet Force, Burton on Trent at 12.45am, hashtag need some Booker, hashtag now then lads. Thank you Phil. Uh, Mark at Wilco2205 has been done, done a bit of travelling over the Easter period, he said Stuttgart to Brussels to Manchester, the episode fits the journey time perfectly, hashtag SLP on tour. Fantastic, nice one Mark. Uh, Elliot Wrench said... Uh, this is onto the topics of discussion that we'd had before, and I think we'll just cover off what people say, but mm. maybe not. Um, we, we had our say last week, really, didn't we? Yeah. Pretty much. Um, Elliot Wrench said, England match streaming and charging, tricky one. It, good it's getting televised, but agree it won't bring in new fans. Hmm. Mm. Dom Hodgson said, the Brian Davies explanation restreaming has convinced me. I was never bothered about paying. It was more about the missed opportunity to introduce new people to the game. But I guess at 10.30 on a Saturday morning isn't the best. Paul Michael Craig said... I've done a 360 on this after listening to Brian Davies on Super League Pod. So, without being a pedant, does that mean his opinion remains the same? <laughs> I've done, surely, surely you do a 180. I've, I've flipped around loads. I keep mm. I, I, I think every argument from both sides is pretty cogent, so I've landed back where I was originally, which is in line with Brian, so maybe that's what Paul's done too. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wakey White said, same, I hadn't considered it that way before, was glad they are trying online media, but thought it was daft to eschew the beeb. Mm -hmm. And then Chris McGeon said, another great pop. I agree, I also agree with Brian on the streaming, if I had the eloquence to put my thoughts together, it would be the same as his, especially the points about people moaning every time a new idea is considered. Keep up the great work. I think that's to Brian and to us. Yeah. But certainly to Brian. Thank you, Christmas. Hey, Brianna. Christmas Keown. Yeah. Uh, Rich Langley got in touch uh, no, finally lads. on this. Mm. He said, while the arguments for streaming, in brackets, testing, appetite for online de- delivery, etc., are all sound, 
Was not the opportunity to get new fans to watch an international ahead of the World Cup something we should have taken? The morning kickoff may have put off a number of people, but the BBC could have put out extended highlights at other times and via iPlayer. Do the RFL need to try and put pressure on Sky to release some of their games, such as the Championship, which they only have so they can broadcast a summer bash and try and see if there's an appetite for some of those, e.g. London or Toulouse, or Fed versus KR, could pull in decent numbers. Keep up the good work. Um, I said we weren't going to talk about it, but that last point you make is a new point. Mm. Uh, We'll come back to that, about Sky releasing some Championship stuff after we cover off Bernard's last point on this. Um, at Bernard JKD even if I tweeted a list of 100 things I'd still have extra treats for what's wrong with England versus Samoa being pay-per-view on the web even your one obsolete BBC camera and accompanying chamois leather white preference for match coverage would be better mm-hmm. so there you go all the views covered on that um, I don't think ours need to no nope. we alright yeah we've, we've covered it all gone backwards and forwards ourselves yeah right so on the uh, releasing the championship games mm. that's an interesting idea whether there'd be any scope to buy the rights to some of it back yeah off Sky or whether whether we were talking more about a, a post live you know yeah after the weekend streaming service where you put all the team's feeds into one Fev's highlights package actually is multi-camera Really? I saw at the weekend, unless this this game was a one-off. Right. Because they showed Missy Telepapa's trial, that was pretty decent, mm-hmm. but they were banging on about it being world-class, and, right. you know, settle down. Let's have a word with Liam Marshall first, before we talk about what truly is world-class, but, um, but anyway, it was a great finish. And, but Ethan, yeah. and Ethan Ryan. Oh, of course, he's a good leaper. Um, two, two cameras they had on that, so yeah. get all this getting together, grow it, and then maybe we've got something there. I think so. I like the idea of streaming some championship games out as well. Mm. I think that might be the way to Or at go. least putting a service out there where you can pay, subscribe and see them all rather than have to pay for yeah. each different club. Then it would be a talk about how you distribute those revenues out between the clubs. And additional revenue is always a good thing in terms of our sport, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, David Powell got in touch. Hashtag now then, lads. Good stats on Cunningham's reign. Don't forget, he was also the attack coach under Brown as well, which, yeah, was the well, other, the the other coffee, really, isn't it? where they scored no points yeah. under him, yeah. We've got another McKeown on the books. Yes, this one is um, Neil McEwen. He said, now then, lads, the 18th man should be on the bench for injuries to foul play, i.e. Westwood on Sutcliffe leads down for a whole game. Oh, we could do a podcast on that on its own, Jesus, couldn't yeah, we? The, the permutations of that are enormous, aren't they? Any quick hot takes on it? Um, I think the only way you can... If, if they do implement it, you have a nominated 18th man, a five-man bench, and the 18th man only comes on. I personally... Oh, I can see both sides of this yeah, argument yeah. because I don't like the idea of extending the bench too much, but I also... I think it is fair on teams where things like the West... In the very specific case of Westwood on Sutcliffe, I think it would be fairer on a team like Leeds who lose a player like that to be able to, to bring someone in in those cases... But it, it, it would, just opens us up to so much shit, doesn't it? To me, it would only be able to apply to head knocks mm. where there's proof handed to the match commissioner that the player didn't meet his concussion protocols or even an RFL official has you know, been part of conducting those tests. Yeah. Other than that, we're talking bloodgate, mm. aren't we, from yeah. the Yornian situation. Yeah. And we don't want that sort of scandal no. creeping in. No. Um, so... Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, move on. Al Walker. Always a pleasure, yeah. never a chore. So this is the uh, long-promised Alan Walker Rugby League postcard. He says, Sir Le Pont d'Avignon, ho hi ho. Very good. He says, Start with a song, why not? Why not take your loved one to see Rugby League at Avignon in the lovely saint Ruth Stadium in Avignon? Yeah. Very <laughs> the good. The stadium is over 100 years old and dates to an Avignon Olympic where a Yornian club. Fortunately for us, they saw the error of, error of their ways a long time ago and started nurturing the likes of Tony G, freshly released from Alcatraz. I presume that's just down the road, is it? Yeah. Right, like Alcaron. When you walk out of the train station, you're confronted by a big gate in the city walls. If you want, you can walk all the way around. If you walk straight on through the gate, after a few hundred yards, you arrive at the main square, Place de Hologue. Hologue? Hologe. 
Lorloge. Lorloge. With its lovely merry-go-round and opera house. On the way, pick up a few cans at Carrefour City <laughs> next to Mackie <laughs> D's. Fucking a fucking nose down. Welcome to this cultural city. Stop in at our low, low end supermarket and go for a burger. To fill up on the minibar. <laughs> Why not stay at the Mercure Centre Palais de Paps? Right in the centre, next to the main square. You can have a nice steak at Le Boucherie, discount for hotel guests, and watch the world go by. As you can guess, Le Boucherie means butchers. Hashtag question mark. Yes, it does. Uh, hashtag, I guess it means, you know, 